It is the blue Zerg player, Elaser. Down here in the bottom left hand side of the map, according to Cats, the Rockley of StarCraft in spirit. <laughs> From Kaisen. Ravi, I guarantee you, all of these top players are Rockleys of StarCraft. That's the only way that you can. I, I don't. Okay. It all. All right. So, for those who are not familiar with Naruto, basically, what like the whole Rock Lee thing is, is saying like that you work hard to compensate for like natural born skill and everything. That's the whole like premise of this. And yeah. I think that is only valid, cats, if you are talking about like the scale of things, right? It's all relative, right? If mm -hmm. everyone is working at around mm -hmm. like the same level, then I would agree. But mm -hmm. like the whole point is that he's working harder than everyone else. And if I everyone is if everyone is working harder than everyone else, then no one's working harder than everyone else. Yeah, but that's the thing is we're looking at the pro scene in a vacuum instead of looking at the pro scene compared to everyone else in the chat or us commentating, right? Okay. Because these are the guys that made it. So these guys are, you know, like sample size wise, uh, at, you know, very, they're the 0. 0.000 something 1%, right? Yeah. No, I, I fully agree with you that everyone is that has made it to this level when, in regards to StarCraft is just a superior human being in every way, shape, and form <laughs> to like someone like versus me. No, I'm saying that they have played that much more. Like Raynor has been yeah. playing since he was like, since the game came out, basically, since he was a small kid. To be fair, right. I have also been playing since the game came out, but I'm not as good as Raynor. I mean, if we look at uh, the amount of games that you've played, it would not compare. I think that there is such a thing as a predisposition, but yeah, I think that hard work really trumps any any um, any concept of like talent for the most part. That, you know what? That I will agree with you on. And with that, we can kind of say uh, this should be a fun match between two players who have worked very hard to get to where they are. Yeah, uh, I'm in agreement on that. Uh, now, what I do want to kind of find out is we just got to watch a TVZ where Battle B was able to play a very standard kind of macro style for the most part against Raynor. But I think these two players are going to be a little bit more evenly matched. And I always enjoy seeing whatever Spear kind of throws out at his opponents because I think he does have a pretty fun aggressive play style when he, when he decides he doesn't want to take games to like the 50 minute mark. Yeah, which is which is almost never. I think that that's. I mean, Spirit is gonna play. I think a game for the macro side of things already with a very greedy three CC opening, and a laser is the player that I see as more mid game oriented. So what I expect from this matchup is Spirit is gonna try to split the map. He's gonna try to get to eleven command centers or something of the likes. A laser is gonna get to a comfort zone of like ninety drones then start making Link Bane and then attacking nonstop over and over and over until one of them dies. So a laser is gonna like, I think that that is how this matchup plays out just stylistically um, because a laser is not really the type of player to want to go to the ultra late game and Spirit mm -hmm. is. So, you know, if we get to the ultra late game I, and Spirit is still standing with, uh, with all of his limbs, I think that he has a really good shot but uh, but a laser should have good shots to to cripple him before that or end the game outright. Yeah, I, a laser is definitely one of those players. I think there are not nearly as many pro players that are like Zerg players that have a style like a laser. He is a much more aggressive Zerg player that has some really, really fun, sick timings that just throws opponents for a loop a lot of the time. So. With all that being said, this is all things that are probably not going to come into fruition for at least a little bit. So you get to see the normal kind of PvZ dance, the Reaper and Hellions poking around, Laser trying to get that creep spread up while making the minimum number of Zerglings, and just generally getting up his tech. Yeah. So there's going to be a scout here programmed in the gameplay and game plan of a laser and he's gonna see that there is a banshee being made alongside cloak and that is kind of a preventive measure just in case a laser wanted to go for some somewhat of a of an early road toll in or something like that so it doubles down of course as aggressive play on the side of spirit who is now moving out with a bunch of hellions this is a pretty good number and their primary function here is just going to be to contain creep and keep him safe <laughs> yeah normal tvz shenaniganry uh, afoot. But yeah, more barracks and stuff coming down behind all this. Spirit is going to be pretty safe with his third base just because the Hellions are alive. Now, one thing we did notice absolutely for sure was that Battle B 
loved diving with his Hellions. And I think that is a little bit more of a rare trait compared to, I'd say, someone like Spirit or a lot of the other Terran players in the European scene, where I feel like most of the time they are pretty conservative with their Hellions. They kind of poke around, they'll try and kill off some creep tumors, pick away at maybe like some stray drones or something, but they don't actually usually go very deep on the creep. Mm, yeah, especially not up a ramp like this. It's a very narrow choke, so he has to be really careful. On the other side, the Banshees are going to look to go into the main base and try to find some drones maybe near the gas. There's already a queen parked in a good position, but uh, Spirit should be able to click a couple of drones without exposing the Banshees to this spore. And actually getting a queen is even nicer. Still a couple of drones on the way out as well. So really nice poke by Spirit, but maybe overexposing the one red Banshee could mm -hmm. cost, cost him a little bit as he will now have to retreat. Yeah. I'll have to back off, but there's only that one Overseer, so uh, the Banshees still have an opportunity to get some additional damage done and maybe in some other locations, and that's exactly what they're going to look to do, finding an extra drone or two. And Hellion's going to also try and dive around to that side and clean up some extra creep spread. Really, really nicely done. Yeah, I, I feel like Spirit's actually done a pretty decent job of containing a lot of the creeps so far, so kudos to him. Yeah, he's done really, really good so far. And uh, he wants to be the position that he that he wants that that he's in right now. I think he doesn't need to end the game anytime soon, so he's gonna be pretty low uh, on the risk taking side of things, right? He hasn't attempted at really running by Helions or going for any major aggression up until now. This is gonna be his first poke, his first push, and uh, you would have to imagine that he's gonna take the the side here, the side uh, the side base to the right. Mm. Attempt to do that one, yeah. We'll see. Yep. Doors are opened up. Hellion's going to try and run in and find a little bit of piece of damage, but the Mutilus are popping now. So there is this opportunity for a laser to try and get a really hard shutdown on a lot more of this push, be a little bit more punishing by also picking off things like the Metavax or sneaking around and picking off Sea Shanks. Or you can do actually what uh, it looks like a laser is going to opt for, and that's actually to try and backstab with the Mutas and just use your ground force to push back this Terran army and that is going to be potentially really effective because as far as I can yeah. tell, Spirit is not really chunking up his army back at home and sending them in waves. Oof. Yeah, this is nasty. And, uh, you know, the Muta are not really a super common unit these days. Like, they have been kind of making their way a little bit more uh, prominently into the matchup. But for a very long time, it has just been mainly Ling Bane. So it is, the Muta can actually catch Terrans uh, for, uh, by surprise these days. Though this is a really nice setup on the low ground from Spirit, mm. so Laser has to be really careful. Spirit has been looking to bait out shots from those tanks for a very long time. He was exposing the Hellions forward earlier and just having them uh, kind of sieged on the high ground. And Laser was not taking the bait because he didn't even see them. So uh, this ends, ends up working out for Laser's Muta, but this is still a very strong push for Spirit. Man, the hell that positioning over here, just keeping those Hellions alive from earlier on has really been paying massive dividends. As you can see, mm -hmm. they're trying to break on through. Comes in from the south side as well. Bailings, ooh, honestly, they look like they were getting okay connections, but at the end of the day, there's just way too much depth for that oh, army. Man. And Spirit taking a massive lead. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was a, a, yeah, that was really bad by a laser. Like, as far as like the Muta flight path there, he just didn't notice, I suppose, mm -hmm. where all the Marine Club was. So they just all kind of flew over the Muta. The, the Banelings like you were talking about, Ravi, they did not connect well enough. And all of a sudden, a game that, that Spirit would have been happy to play until later and that looked good, economically speaking, for a laser. He did his backstab. He did the damage that he was looking for with those Muta. He had uh, the surprise element that, that he would have hoped for, but just a terrible engagement in a very difficult position near nearby those chokes. Uh, makes it so that Spirit actually ends this game just within 10 minutes, which is fantastic. I mean, that is one of the big dangers of doing going up against one of those kind of styles, right? Is that just if you try to overcommit, try and go for that defense or something, you push into an awkward spot. And Terran players are so well set up, but there's just that constant pressure you feel, right? Where the sea shanks are right outside of your base. The Marines are just outside of your base, but there's this impenetrable fortress of the Hellbats and all the Marines there and the Sea Shanks. So it's really, really tough. And you were talking about the Mutas not really being able to find a whole lot as they ran straight over all the Marines and everything. So it's a bit unfortunate, but I, I kind of still credit Spirit with just doing a really good job with the pressure, oh, kind sure. of forcing the mistake out of a laser there. 
No, yeah, and the Hellions were brilliant too, right? Like the Hellions were basically preventing the creep, so he just kind of makes it so that those Hellions have already carved a path for his army to sit down that ramp, right? He knows that there's no creep there because he has been babysitting that area of the map, and that was that was the you know the primary function of the the first step for those Hellions. So when his push comes, it's super strong, and like you like you said, he st he stands right out of creep, and Elaser has to go down multiple chokes. So for, from Elaser side of things. It's a very difficult engagement to, to take because you don't want to come from the narrowest choke. You want to come from multiple angles, but then you have to sync up everything perfectly. He didn't manage to do that. He brought back a lot of his Muta, like, and if he had something like nine Muta, seven died before anything. Like they just they just flew flew on top of Marine. So it was not an ideal fight or situation, but a laser felt hard pressed to take it and difficult to gather information as well, right? Because yeah. how how do you see exactly what's down? in that low ground, it's very difficult, so. Um, yeah, great job by this guy here in the top right-hand side. It is the Red Terran player for Kai C Gaming, the Rock Lee of StarCraft. It is Spirit. And down here in the bottom left-hand side of the map, the Blue Zerg player, still undefeated in the group in series so far. It is a laser. I'm saying Team Liquid. Yeah, I mean, he's already dropped a few maps here and there throughout his series and stuff, but he has still been always able to pull it out in the end. Uh, the maps that he dropped was one versus Raynor, very understandable, it's Raynor. Uh, and the other one actually versus Gerald, which I think ZVP can definitely be one of those matchups where Protoss, yeah, losing a map versus a Protoss, I think it happens sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, Poland has so many good players, actually, because you said Gerald, and my mind gravitated towards saying, oh, the best Protoss in, in Poland to kind of like, you know, finish this, um, this uh, what uh, the Muslim ones called a trium, I want to say. Like, uh, there was a triage. <laughs> the Muslim ones said triage? 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 Tri triage is like a verb of like, you triage some work. It's one it's, of my It's not a trio. <laughs> I, I hate the word triage because it's it's just bringing me back to like software development tech company stuff. Yeah, like what is a triage? It, it it's not like a you know what you would think. A from... triad? Are you thinking of a triad? Yeah, a, tri a triad is what what the correct word would have been, but the Muslim one said triage, and uh, and I remember <laughs> it was the Muslim Smix and I on a panel, mm -hmm. and then Smix borrowed the word and then she said triage. <laughs> <laughs> And then I thought, wow, that's such a such a cool word for for you know to say three something. And I'm like, yeah, that's a great triage. <laughs> we were all saying triage, and the chat was like, yeah, you guys are not using triage properly at all. Like, is that even a word? I love that. That's actually so good. I I can totally see that too. Where you like you hear it, and I'm like, <laughs> do I do I just not know? That must be it. Yeah, let's just. Just keep going with it. Yeah, it was such a cool word, I thought. I was like, wow, this is so fancy. You know, it sounds kind of like, uh, it must be some sort of French for three. French for three. Actually, yeah, I could see that. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I don't actually know French. I was going to I was gonna say the Spanish word for three, but. But what, Ravi? You can say it. I no, won't judge. I won't judge. It's not my place. It's not my place. <laughs> because, of, because you're casting with me. What? No, it has nothing to do with that. Like, I definitely know how to say three in Spanish. It's, no, I, oh, oh, okay. So yesterday we were doing our audio checks and they usually ask us to count to like 10 or just keep counting numbers. Mm -hmm. And I forgot, I forgot the, the Spanish word for three, but I, re, I remembered what 13 and 14 were. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah, because Bono, because Bono says, always says uno, dos, tres, catorce. So that is how every single person that does a countdown in, in Spanish does it because they've heard you too, you know, say it. One, so two, everyone knows 14. 14. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, he's going to skip from 3 to 14. I can see this one coming. And then you did it. I was like, yep. I know. That's fascinating. He, he has listened to you too. That's that's actually really interesting. Uh, I didn't even think about that. One of my favorite things is uh, I, was, I was watching a lot of like Race to World First for Final Fantasy 14 stuff. And I love, there's like, a, I don't know, there's like some ongoing meme in some of that, like that game where you say one, two, tres, and like four, and it's like something in, and it's like the Japanese word for four or something. And then it'd be like, and five in German. 
Like, they literally just say five in German. I'm like, that always oh, takes Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, we do have a little bit of interesting number of Zerglings made over here for a laser. Like, uh, is able to actually get a nice little surround on the Reaper before it is able to poke up into the main base. That was kind of like the first real pokey. You can actually look at Spirit's vision if we get a quick look at it. That he's basically just seen like the edge of creep and that's it. He never really got very far with any of his units mm -hmm. thus far. Yep, yeah. and we pretty much have the a very similar opening to the first game from Spirit. So he's going to open with the Cloak Banshee again. It's going to be generally safe against most early aggression that, that a laser could throw at him. And the laser is the type of player that will get thrown off by making a little bit of an extra unit or by losing an extra unit here and there early on. Because again, he is extremely methodical. He has everything figured out in his game plan. And he has played, you know, like he is, I think, the most structured Zerg player that I know of. Mm -hmm. And he has played so many games that, that, you know, if you throw him off a little bit, that is where, where he can get into a little bit of trouble. And this Banshee is looking to do exactly just that. The Spore is mm -hmm. not ready, and that's going to mean a few more drone losses that a laser wants to take. So oh. he is covering the drones with the Queens very smartly here to make sure that the Banshee has trouble clicking on the drones. The Banshee focuses on the drones that are still in between the cracks, and so it finds three all day. And uh, maybe one or two were saved with those transfuses, but that also means less transfuses for the follow for the follow-ups. Yeah, less transfuses, less creep spread available and everything. So nice bit of harassment there from Spirit, but also, you know, solid defense there from Blazer, not losing too, too much. And it does have to be careful about how many Hellions there are out on the map as these Lings are running very far off of creep, trying to find a little bit of counter damage, but not able to do so. Banshees also looking to try and move back in during the Hellion harassment. We'll see what they're going to be able to get done. Yeah, and they're just gonna be happy with a little bit of creep here. And uh, here, this is a nice position for Spirit as well because mm. he knows exactly where the Spore is going to be parked. So he can kind of just, you know, send these uh, this Banshees from the base and know exactly where, where they're gonna be maneuvering without having to check. Is the Spore one hex wow. to the right or, you know, is it just dead in the dead center? And this time around it was. And your wow is warranted, Ravi, because that is eight workers. That is very unusual to see at this mm. kind of uh, level of play. With this stage in the game, 13 workers now. The Hellions are going to get trapped. They are going to all end up dying over here. But even just trading out versus a few final lings, while the Banshees now know that there's not actually that many Queens to help defend oh. against them. So one wow. Banshee gets low, but survives 17 drones picked up. Oh, this, is, this is massive amounts of damage, cats. Yeah, people talk sometimes uh, when they identify with something, they call it their spirit animal. This is just spirit being an animal. This is insane. <laughs> I mean, he has done so great uh, here. Elisa really needs to make something happen with a Buda, right? Because otherwise he is mm -hmm. just, you know, like he's like he's not frowning for no reason. I gotta, I'll say that. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think if he is not able to make something happen in the mutas, then a laser spirit animal is going to be like a leather belt or like, you know, leather shoes or something Whoa, or like a wallet dark. because he will have, he will be dead at that point. Like he, he needs to do something because even though the supplies are pretty even and stuff, like it is a large amount of damage to take. And he basically had to replenish a lot of his supply with just the mutas, which means mm -hmm. that he's going to have to compensate with having gone for things like the upgrades or getting out as many ground units later on. Mm -hmm. Like when you say a leather belt, you mean like the imagery that I get is him like self-flagellation, right? What? Is that, is that, oh, that's not what you were going for? No. Okay, well, my mind is darker than yours then, I guess, Raps. No, I just think like, I just... His spirit animal is going to be a leather belt. I just imagined, you know, him hitting him, his back a, with a leather Or like a wallet or something. Oh my God. Oh, I see. You went really dark. <laughs> no, I just, I just, it's like leather, right? It's like, it's like... You, you're dead and already been turned into something of like other value. I see that. Yeah, yeah, I did not see that. I did not make that connection. Okay. All right. Well, here is the next uh, poke from uh, Spirit. Only four drones have fallen, but that is more than the Muta have accomplished on the other side. Okay, finally, this is a little bit of a small victory here. <laughs> After the supply, it was kind of weird because there's two SCVs that could have died for free instead. And the laser will lose one Muta in the process too. So. Instead of mm -hmm. taking two uh, free SEVs, he bruises a Supply Depot and loses a Muta. That does not feel good, and, and it's a game that already doesn't feel good. However, it is not a game without hope for a laser. He does have mm -hmm. decent creep spread, and he, uh, you know, with creep spread, you can always hold. If your opponent 
overextends and you have a good amount of supply, if you connect those bane links, the game kind of resets to where you know you can't play for that late game. And mm -hmm. we know that Spirit sometimes with his advantage doesn't look to seize it, but instead just drops extra command centers and makes sure that he can go that he can go to his comfort zone. That that can be one of his weaknesses, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that is an important thing to notice. Oh, wow. Nice find of all the paintings that were morphing over there. Likely looking to go for a big swing in onto like a planetary fortress or something. Uh, but yeah, I mean, one of the, the big scary thing I would say for a laser is that there's a massive attack coming with 2 2 finishing up. But if he is just going to actually bunker down for, like you said, throw down more command centers and not really look to go for any kind of move out, then. Yeah, the, the damage from earlier really didn't actually affect too, too much then. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Elixir is now maxed out. So the game will re-stabilize. Spirit did not look to capitalize on his advantage. And I can't say that's, that's new. I mean, like last game, I was pretty happy with that because it was like, it, it wasn't even a game where he had a huge advantage, but he had planned his timing. And again, both of these players are so very methodical that it seems like they are sometimes unwilling to adapt, right, from from like what their initial plan is. So Spirit, even though he does oh so boy. much damage with the Banshees this time around, even though he does so much with the Hellions on the follow-up, oh even though he holds the first set of Muta, etc., he also just kind of lets the laser max out. And this is very much a laser doing a laser things as well. This is what I was talking about before the series. We are now going to see, now a laser is at those plus 90 plus workers that I talked about. Now he's just going to be looking to flood over and over and try to break spirit over time and, you know, like basically play into the late game as if it was an endless mid game. That is his biggest mm -hmm. superpower. Yeah, I mean, a laser is absolutely taking the entire map. It's just funny to see how he is one i don't i don't even want to count how many bases that is right now he still is actually finishing up his 2-2 upgrades and just goes to show he is really planning to flood out non-stop units and keep throwing them at spear like you were saying and so far i mean he's found kind of mixed success with it but i think that is the really scary thing about this style is you can have a few attempts that don't really work out and then one attempt that works out really well and kind of all starts becoming worth it yeah, we were talking about this in the CVP matchup yesterday, but a lot of the time what happens for the Zerg players, and, and at, I think that at the highest level, players have an easier time like uh, identifying what advantages they're carving, and they literally have to carve through a lot of buildings and a lot of static defense or a lot of strong setups. Like if we look at, for example, that, that triangle third right now, right? Uh, let's take a look, Niala, the triangle third of Spirit. I'm sorry, the Spirit. Yeah, so you can see how many buildings there are, and that makes it so much harder for Bane to connect onto the SEVs, for Lynx to, to connect onto anything, as we have a very strong attack here, but it's gonna get repelled for the most part. A couple of tanks fall, however, and this is part of the setup that I'm talking about. Another set of, a bunch of tanks actually fall. This is what would enable uh, a laser to continue to apply pressure with that Ling Bane army. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not just that the attack fails per se, like, sometimes the Zerg trades very inefficiently, but it kills enough stuff that the next attack is bound to do a little bit more damage. So the first mm -hmm. trades for Zerg are usually a little bit less efficient. And as you kind of dig deeper and deeper and get rid of those buildings and get rid of obstructions, your attacks are more likely to work. And that's the attempts that we see here repeatedly from a laser. Exactly. Like, see, he doesn't run the bailings forward. He goes for those buildings. Those buildings no longer there. Let's see if Spirit looks to remove. Yeah, important thing to factor in. Uh, also want to note just the um, number of mutas that a laser is going for. He is doubling down even harder than before, where I think before he was around like 15, 16 mutas or something. Now he's up to 25 and continuing to invest in all those muta upgrades, like the carapace upgrades and everything. Another so one. He is going to try and get some more damage done over here. I'm a little surprised he doesn't go for the supply depots on the right, which kind of open up a little bit of the pathway, but I guess it also makes sense. SCVs are going to run either way, and, well, better to just get the SCVs in the first place. Yeah, and we've been talking about this, and finally he breaches, he gets the triangle, but what attempt was that? The fourth or so run mm -hmm. by? Right? So, again, you could see it as the first three failed, or you could see it as the first three made this fourth one uh, uh, possibility. 100%. Taking out a lot of these missile turrets, doing a similar thing, where now all the production facilities are a little bit more exposed. Picking up with some of the oh. kills, but the snipes... Oh, no. Gonna be able to catch quite a few of them. 
Yeah, that was nasty. That's uh, eight meters down the last like minute or so because he was over 25 and now he's down to like 17 or so. So very nice defense there from Spirit, but loses quite a few Marines and Marauders and Siege Tanks on this front mm -hmm. line as a laser finding yet another opening. And Spirit, he has a single Marauder attacking Atri, but he has just been on the ultra, ultra defensive this entire time. Whereas a laser feels like he's been actually breaking through on Spirit's side of the map quite a few times. Yeah. So now the oh that playback was full by the uh. way, and now and now the game of chicken begins right. Like Spirit is now consolidating most of his army at the triangle because Elaser has only been been hitting the triangle. So Elaser, if he catches wind of where oh never mind this oh yeah it is mostly uh, all the ghosts and a bunch of tanks here at the triangle. So right now Elaser is looking to angle elsewhere because if you are heavily on one side you're obviously not going to be heavily on the other right so that is the only thing that you're looking for otherwise you can continue to come into this base which is what a laser is trying to do and with enough paintings i mean the ghosts are not amazing but they will be able to run away and i think we were doing the math at some point the other day and you need something like six paintings really to kill ghosts so they're rather durable and that was a very good trade for spirit but he needs to remake all of those structures and he needs to push back the creep Wow, yeah, I mean, that uh, battle report really tells the tale there. A massive number of units going down there for a laser. Not nearly as many for Spirit. Even that Siege tank getting some insane value on the Banelink connections and stuff. So Spirit finding a little bit of hope here and also finally starting to actually build up a little bit of a bank. It feels like he's never really been able to max out and start getting above a thousand minerals or a thousand gas. And he's finally getting to that point, which I think is going to give him a lot more comfort. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, he's going to look... Once we get to that super late game, he's still going to be comfortable. We're still going to be looking to contest four bases and make sure that the map is split at a reasonable rate. Otherwise, a laser is just going to have too much, too many more bases to be effective with. We're going to see a nuke that kills a few workers here and bruises a hatchery. So as much as, you know, we'd like to get hyped, it's really pretty insignificant at this point. Yeah. Uh, a laser said being brought down to 96 workers instead of, you know, the 102 he was at beforehand. But this is going to continue to flood units and actually finally hitting a lot more hard on the left hand side. Oh, there are all those ghosts oh. we're talking about. The Bailings, they don't care if you're cloaked or not. They can still try and explode on you, even if it does require some manual detonations. But Overseer going to help on that left hand side. Finds oh, quite a few so. SCVs on the right hand side. And a lot of the ghosts, I think, ended up falling there. There's only six left. Yeah, more importantly, on the triangle, again, that is that is the joint that has been kind of faltering for Spirit here. So a laser applying a, a lot of pressure there, and I think that that is where he needed to be. I do think that the one attack that he that he made into the, all the ghosts and tanks with mostly just Muta Bane was kind of a mistake, because at that point, I but I, but I also had hard to blame him, because what he was doing, I think, was showing a lot of units on the radar near like on this area basically right like the, the closest watchtower to this area that we're watching right now and in doing that he was hoping that spirit pulled pull those ghosts over to this side and he just didn't now spirit is i mean this is a desperation look a little bit off he's just hoping that you know the units kind of like transfer over or something because he killed like two crypto with it yeah, that one was not entirely ideal, but we are getting to a funny and a scary point where you look at the supplies, you say, oh, well, laser's up point supply, but a lot of that is still in workers. Spirit lost quite a few workers himself, so he went down to 48. He was making eight at a time, but his army supply is almost 30 higher than his, or 20 or so higher than his opponent. So laser really does need to continue to find more roundabout sort of attacks instead of just going into head-on fight for the entire army. And he's doing a great yeah. job of it so far. Exactly. Yeah. This is this is exactly what you're talking about. He is doing exactly that and doing a wonderful job of it. A few bailings are gonna lag behind, and they really don't have much to find. So, yeah, I like this retreat. Otherwise, they would have just gotten trapped. And you don't really want to be trading bailings for buildings, especially like near the main. Just because they're not, you know, if you're blowing up walls to then come at come at the base later, then fantastic. But the mainings generally just want to trade against units, ideally marines and the likes. So these are good trades instead. And uh, yeah, the rest of the units can look after the buildings, this Muta and Lynx. This is looking incredibly good for a laser now, and he has found a an opportunity to breach, right? Like, and, and we mm -hmm. see, if we look at the map, it's all through that avenue of the third that he has been weakening throughout the game over and over again. Yeah. 
Poor Soul is uh, not going to have a whole lot going for him in this game anymore. I think we may be seeing a laser tying up the series one to one in a few moments as he gets in on top of production. You know, they always know what they say about getting in on top of a Terrence production. <laughs> it's usually at the beginning of the end there, but damn, a laser really playing a phenomenal game number two here. Just that hard macro style that throw everything at him after I hit 100 drone style. Yeah, that, that is kind of the, the laser classic. And I was going to ask you if he was going to fist bump or not. He does end up doing the single fist bump. So a little bit of relief there. And maybe he can ease out on the, you know, let his uh, eyebrows loose a little bit. Because he was just, you know, he was angry that game. I feel like you're the kind of person that would really enjoy like a, enjoy a TV show like Lie to Me or something where you're like looking at the extremely subtle mm. facial cues and body Lie language. Was cool. Yeah. My problem with Lie to Me and, and House is that every episode is the same. That was true. That yeah. was a problem. But the characters are good enough that, you know, I still enjoyed the show, both shows. So. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But I, I always love your in-depth analysis after the game is about the body language of just identify how good someone's going to be feeling after going into game number three. Um, <laughs> I'd actually, you know, interestingly though, I'd say like in, while the games aren't exactly 100% what I expected, game one was not necessarily what I expected, for example, right? But I would say overall the series and kind of the flow of it has been relatively what I expected. Spirit being able to take a game after like some playing really, really well, showing a lot of promise here. And then a laser kind of like seizing momentum again and making this comeback and still looking like he's on that hot streak. But also this is how a lot of their previous series have gone, right? Where Spirit looks good in a game, but a laser still ends up winning in the end. That's why they have a close game or map score between each other, but the series score still heavily favors in terms of a laser. So I'm a, I'm a little bit more worried for Spirit going into game number three. I'm hoping that he can uh, bring his A game moving into this. Yeah, Curious Minds is the perfect map to describe these players because they are both Rock Lee of StarCraft, Ooh, basically. Is is Rock Lee a Curious Mind? No, I was going to say it's the is the <laughs> and is the antithesis of the description of these players, but then I thought, wow, like I shouldn't say that, so I just thought, <laughs> let's <laughs> shots fired. Neither one of these players use their brain. The curiosity is, diff is different. I, and I do think they are curious, inquiring minds. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I think especially, uh, I, I do associate a laser with being someone who is, in a sense, like, it's not that he is doing something so outside the realm of normal, but I think he's always been one of those players that has a little bit of his own style and everything. And I think anyone that moves outside of the absolute standard is someone that is going to have a little bit more of like an intellectual mind about what they can do in StarCraft and how they can approach the game in a slightly different way because you're mapping out your own style, right? Like, that's you know all about that and what's involved in that. Without a doubt, mapping out styles is the coolest thing. And these guys have maps that are just as detailed as they get. They're blueprints in the top bottom right-hand side of the map. It is the Terran player in the red for Kai C Gaming. Spirit! Kind of the series one to one he, up here in the top left hand side, the blue Zerg player from Team Liquid. He is a laser. Good old ice yellow blue. Yeah, ice cold. Ice cold. Yeah. Well, then he would be Team Solid because ice would be a solid, right? Not yeah. Team Liquid. I made that joke yesterday, Ravi. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> I don't remember it at all. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Some, some of the, it, it's been a while since we've done the DreamHack stuff and everything, but I did, I did remember that it was like ten to eleven hours or so. I days. can't believe you've done this. I'm sorry, I forgot about the seven second comments or joke My that you puns, made. in puns, Eleven hour you broadcast. Have so many puns. To... You gotta let me have the one. You know. I. You know. You didn't remember what. Pun I made about Hearthstone on Twitter. You just kind of said, I like, don't, yeah. You made a pun. <laughs> I don't remember so what bad. it was. I blocked it out. I blocked that one out. Can you repeat your pun about Hearthstone? 
Um, what would you call it if Harstam had marines that had stim last an hour? An hour stim. An hour stim. Harstam. It looks better spelled out. <laughs> See, a laser smiling. <laughs> you like it. It looks better spelled out. I love it. It does because it's because hour has a silent H. That's uh -huh. an important part of the look for how. It, you know what? It's it's funny on Twitter. Okay. I yeah. I am sure it's funny on Twitter. All right. I'm, well, we're gonna have a triple hatch here opening from a laser. Nothing too out of the ordinary as per usual in this match. I'm gonna ask you would expect from these two players. The map, however, is Curious Minds. So, you know, on this map, Roach styles are uh, something that can happen. A laser can play even more mid-game oriented on this map than another. So there's a very wide open third base uh, at the triangle or fourth base, depending on what spirit chooses it to be. And uh, that can be that can be very time, a timing oriented map for either one of them, right? Because mm -hmm. it lends itself. This map is very good for tank pushes onto that third or onto the other potential third. And Laser is taking the triangle third. So if we look to the right of here, there, these avenues here are really good for tanks. Like there's some nasty tank positions here. And it's not easy or it's a little bit harder at least to spread creep up those ramps and past those uh, little uh, fog areas as well. Right, so if you want to do that, you got to plan ahead for that, and you got to invest a little bit more of your overlords and you know your attention towards that area. So Spirit has the ability to maybe exploit that with a timing like we saw in game one, and a laser has uh, the potentially open, uh, just open area in the th triangle third if he wants to go for roaches or something like that. So. And I'm glad you brought that up, actually, just because contextually after that last game, I do wonder if Spirit is going to be super confident about how that last game went, where it was just this massive macro fest, a laser taking half of the map and everything. Or if he feels like, you know, Curious Minds is a very different map. So there's not only the potential for some of those more aggressive attack paths that Spirit could be more enabled by, but also... I want to know if Spirit feels like a laser can't really do the same style as last game nearly as well, just because there's a lot fewer safe bases you can take. You can't really just easily spread yourself out across every single one of those bases and just start going to 100 drones, powering out units quite as simply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. At the same time, it's, it is a smaller map. Like, I don't know that you feel super comfortable just like splitting it on the side of Spirit. He is kind of open again, by the way with pretty much the exact same opener three mm -hmm. times in a row, three CC into Banshee opening here. And uh, it will also go unpunished, but it is very difficult to punish Banshee openers because they're so good against Roaches and Roaches are the best way to be aggressive. Ling, Ling Baning busts are not really a thing that can ever work because, you know, Hellions are a unit. Um, so yeah, like I can't blame a laser for not looking for the punish, but actually four links will make it into the natural base and that's already more damage than he wanted to take. Mm -hmm. It also pulls back the entirety of his Hellion squad. And uh, yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Ravi, also because last game, Spirit had such an incredible start and he kind of threw it away. Like not like, you know, it wasn't like a mega throw, but it was one of those classic Spirit games where it's like, I could kill you right now, or I have like so much momentum that maybe I should apply some pressure like most Terrans would do. But also, I feel pretty good about adding a bunch of command centers and letting you max out. And then a laser just gets to his own comfort zone kind of for free, right? Unpunished yeah. from all the early damage that he took. Yeah, I think that is something to keep in mind that I'm sure is going to be a little bit on Spirit's mind of... Did I miss an opportunity to capitalize mm -hmm. on things? How does Spirit react to that kind of game? Does he feel like, mm -hmm. oh, I'll just adjust and go for the same opening, see if I can find some kind of similar-ish damage? Or is the laser going to have to try and compensate? Do I play things out a little bit differently, but make it look similar? There's all kinds of ways you could react, and I think every player will react a little bit differently. So it's going to be uh, the moment that we end up finding out how Spirit feels like that game went and what actually needs to be adjusted for him to win. Yeah, a much worse start for Spirit. And what makes me hopeful is really the map, uh, like in terms of like mm -hmm. a change in the approach for Spirit. Because as that last game was going on, 
we talked about how he could just do the thing that he does, right? So, so if we if we saw an adjustment based on the last game, it would kind of be like 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 heaven sent to some degree, to some degree because it would be spirit kind of changing his plan that he usually just kind of sticks to, uh, and it is partly why he is such a strong late game player and why he is such a great practice partner for everyone. It's because as far as like utilizing those units, as far as like securing his bases, making the planetary fortresses, getting those setups. I mean, look at that, like, look at that base. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. like the supply depots, covering the bunker with those extra supply depots. Like his planning is superb because he iterates so much. But if you tell him like, hey, change things up on the fly, I don't think that spirit is that guy necessarily. So uh, again, I, I like this approach just because it is this map. He's going to be pushing through the area that I was mentioning, but at least already accounted for most of that with very good crit trade early on. Yeah, going to be difficult for Spirit to break on through super quickly over here, especially before the 1-1 one -one finishes up for uh, a laser, which would have actually been potentially a nice timing. But like you said, creep spread makes it a bit difficult to break through. Langs are going to come storming on forward. Looks like a laser wants to commit to cleaning all of this up, and he catches the siege tanks, or at least one of the siege tanks on siege. Gets quite a nice little wraparound over here. The Hellbath holding the line, but the numbers from a laser looked a little bit overwhelming at first, but even with the reinforcements and stuff arriving here for Spirit, he continues to break on through, and that was all of the Banelings for the most part. For a laser, he really needs a bit more time to replenish his forces. Yeah, so as that was going on, oh, I was ready to say, wow, a laser is going to crush this, but I don't think he needed to take that engagement, right? Like, because it looked good, like you were saying, and maybe he saw an opportunity and, and he knows something, but at the same time, you're taking an engagement off of creep in a, in a position that is not really threatening. He's going to do it again, and it again, it might work, but I don't know that he necessarily needs to do this because it's spirit that needs to bite a little bit more time, and it's not like he's cutting reinforcements or anything like that. And now a laser in a very precarious position here to hold. He does have burrow Ooh. and banelings, so maybe he gets a burrow, a, a huge burrowed baneling. One is not gonna do anything, obviously, so don't pay too much attention to that one. But he is gonna need some comeback mechanics here. Mm, there he, there's a flank, but there's no. Okay, three banelings. Oh. <laughs> there was you actually, go. Exactly what he needed. Yeah, wow. I mean, what a doozy of a back and forth there so far. I really think actually looking back on that, a lot of the weirdness of him fighting off of creep and also saying like, I have a flank and all these other things. I think it was also just supposed to be timed out with that beanling bomb that came out from the drop over on the other side mm -hmm. of the map. Because I think he was trying to time That's that out and saying, Spirit has to react on the front line. So he's mm -hmm. not going to be able to react over back at home and defend properly so that is a very good observation you may very well be right yeah. about that refs yeah well at the same time uh, i still think that you could do the same play when your opponent starts pushing into you and and still you know execute the same idea basically yeah like wait with the banning drop but i think either i think way, you're perfectly right given the timings yeah I, either way we end up seeing goes. that a laser is getting some pretty nice cleanups now even without a whole lot of crew spread Cleans up on the front lines, but bottom left hand side is okay. going pretty undefended. Yeah, these paintings, however, might connect Spirit with very good awareness here, very quick to react. Now he's going to spread the Marines as he drops them, and that means that the paintings are not going to trade cost efficiently, at least not to start. Spirit looking for further angles here with these two medevacs. He is excellent at multitasking. A god at that. And uh, now he's looking to secure his fourth. It's not an early fourth. He is continuing to apply pressure, Ravs, and this game is still going on for show. I mean, some mistakes, I think, or some little like little blunders here and there from either player, but it is uh, a little bit of a of a fest of sorts, a yeah. festival. Uh, it is a festival of some kind. But a festival of some kind. <laughs> nice bird. Oh, wow. Cute. Yeah. Very cute. Queen's even going to be regenerating a little bit as they, the transfuses tick. The knocking down the supply depots is nice, but I love how fast Spear just starts rebuilding those. Because you can see on the minimap, the laser is getting ready with another Ling run by mm -hmm. on the bottom side. But the depots will actually almost already be done by the time these Lings and Banelings run in. So, well done. Good reaction time. Very well done. And a laser is swarming like a madman on his side of the map. You can see all the blue as it moves and it is moving in both directions, right? Like these Link, Baneling are just patrolling in the back there in case some Marine really makes it far in there. And on the other side, there is a squad that's ready to pounce, as is this one, but 
You talked about those those uh, supply depots, Ravi. If mm -hmm. if Spirit wasn't on the on the money in remaking those, those those could have been a lot of SCVs lost. But good reactions from either player so far. Yeah, very close back and forth game right now. This is where things get a little bit weird to me, though, as we see another one of these run bys up at the top right hand side. Planted oh. Fortress cannot lift, and Phelan's going after it. There's it's the kill, gone. a very expensive kill, though. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's worth it, right? Like, it, mm. it, it's going to drop the income of Spirit significantly. Now Spirit is on the counter often, so this is... Okay, like, this is where he's looking to punish that move, Ravi. So so he is looking to make me a liar right now. If he if he can hit and <laughs> kill the laser right now, then it was definitely not worth it, right? But yeah. uh, if he can hold the laser that is, then everything is just Ooh. going the laser's way after holding and after taking that planetary fortress, but a beautiful spread on creep. Spirit does not give a dium right now no, no dayums are given at the moment but uh looks like he is gonna back off he doesn't feel like he can push too for far further forward i had i am sure he has absolutely no idea about the top right hand base also being taken by a laser which i think is the base that he probably thinks is what? for him okay well, this is a, weird, up a little bit late over here so the bailings yeah, well they get target fired down beautifully there by spirit I think he just backed away and the Marines attacked whatever was in front of them and what was in front of them was Banelings. So I think that's mm. just Spirit knowing and holding the position that he had. And I think that that's an overextension from a laser out of creep <laughs> for no reason. Like we were talking about how Spirit was confident enough that he was kind of like sitting on creep. And I feel like, you know, like if he spread well enough on creep, he could maybe make something happen still. He backs away and I think that's a fine, sensible decision. I do not think that Elaser had any business pushing out at that point in time. He just dealt economic damage to Spirit. He should have been pretty happy with that. And there's nothing to punish from, from that army retreating really. So, yeah, I, I would not have fan. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. But it looks like Elaser is just going to try and continue to swarm with his mate. I mean, maybe this is just kind of building a little bit into that play cell that we were talking about where a laser just wants to continue swarming non-stop aggression don't give your opponent mm -hmm. a chance to breathe and that's definitely ended up backfiring in that situation but he has still been able to establish the bottom left hand base again if he's able to push back these medevacs without really taking too much damage or halting his aggression then i still kind of feel like i like a lot of what a laser uh, position is even though he's actually mm -hmm. down a little bit in supply and still just trying to remax yeah, for sure. I mean, we have to talk about, you know, whatever moves are being made in the game, especially the ones that are big, and they're always going to favor one player, right? So one player ends up being the loser in 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 every exchange that happens. And usually the, the player, you know, because StarCraft is like generally a pretty freaking balanced game, you know, the player that makes a mistake is usually the one that's going to take a loss and mistakes are... Uh, plenty because uh, you know it's a very complex game these marines for example should not be moving on attack move but yeah they will get picked up and saved however they kind of run, yeah the, the, on the bottom the medevac i believe ran into a spore because it disappeared from my minimap and now on the other side the laser is looking to, to, to continue to punish and i agree with you i mean neither player's position is particularly precarious or amazing here i think this is still very much anyone's game yeah, really love this multi prong harassment from Spirit right now, though. He's been deflecting some of the lasers harassment while also dropping the main and also dropping over at this lower left-hand base. And even keeps the medevac alive with some of those Marines. There's not a whole lot of anti-air actually outside of the Queens just to deal with that. But, man, it just goes to show you, like, a laser's army right now is just 112 lings and 21 banelings. That is everything he has out of the map. He's finally starting to look to get into other tech, but he is trying to make the most of all of these links by spreading them all around. But right now, all of his links are just being spread around for the defense. He has not been able to find any opportunities for a successful offense for a bit. That is very true. And I think that he missed a lot of opportunities because he never had a bank to work with because he was a little bit over aggressive here and there where he didn't have the, the openings to, to really go for it. That has allowed Spirit to get into his late game, but at the same time, Spirit hasn't really looked to to punish those overextensions or anything like that. Instead, he's dropped his classic extra command centers. This game much more warranted of a transition than the last because he didn't have that gigantic advantage going into, into the mid game. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we have a game that's still open, but I do like Spirit's position. Like he has already ghosts. He has already liberators. Elaser's transitioning into ultras, but he's already running into the ultras counter in, in a certain sense. So 
it mm -hmm. is uh, not ideal, perhaps. It's going to definitely be interesting to see how he decides to leverage those ultras, because I absolutely agree. I think he's going to be moving into a funny spot where there's already going to be not only the Liberators out, but also the Ghosts out on the map that will make it difficult for those ultras to find maximum utility and effectiveness, where they don't even have Kitness plating. They already have their counter units out on the map in heavy numbers. Yeah, so so this gets pretty tricky for the Zerg because you know you don't really have any very technical units. Like look at look at the army of a laser. All of this, all of these guys, they want to engage melee, right? And that means if you engage, you better be ready to commit to the engagement because in retreating, all of these range units are gonna attack you. And as they attack you, as they tax your HP and your lives, you're losing value. So if you want to attack into your opponent, you have to be ready to commit with this sort of army composition. And it works when you have a significantly greater economy, but it's not necessarily the case here. He does a little bit, have a little bit more bank. Let's see if a laser has found a little bit of a spot here. Those banelings are kind of stuck behind the CC, now going after the planetary fortress and the SEVs, but they're not going to be able to get the PF. There's not enough banelings simply. With the help of the ultras, they might be able to, but no, the, the snipes are there, and they're going to clear those out. So a very expensive poke here from a laser and he will have to exhaust pretty much his bank in in uh remaxing here and he remaxes on more of the same as well yeah i definitely feel like that was a really awkward choke point to try and get through and you can see how difficult it was for like the failings to get over the planetary for the ultras to get far enough away from the ghost but also get in range of any of the other units i feel like there was a lot of cost associated with that this sea chain positioning, by the way, is a really, really good remember, like, way of reminding people that this is supposed to be spirit space. It's not really made to be defended by the opponent. Oh yeah, the siege tank is absolutely bananas. And Ravs, I really am starting to like spirit position more and more. Elixir is gonna look for something here, though. It is wise of him, very smart to go on the other side of the map. I think where the the defenses are not gonna be situated as heavily. He already knows where the army of spirit was, so he kind of just gets out of range of the of the watchtowers and keeps his opponent guessing. This was a victory for a laser, a much needed one, because uh, spirit, as much as he has the army composition that he wants, he doesn't really have the real state to to make use out of all of his mules and all of his wonderful economy that he has developed for himself. So if we look at if we press income right now, it is actually going to start favoring a laser for the time being until that base gets resituated, and and that's nice, you know. Yeah. Good, good before that, it was favoring spirit already. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the, the power of mules, but we'd have seen the ultras coming on forward, going after, I mean, a lot of them going after some of the command centers, but some of them going after ghosts that are kind of like walled out between the supply depots. Another ultra falling over there, and maybe not the most ideal trade for a laser there, but he really wants to continue this aggression and just not give Spirit a chance to reestablish these bases, not be able to reestablish the command centers. It's just, it's always really tough because I do wonder, like, a laser can't really play this style where he just has a superior economy and trades out ineffectively for too much longer. He can't really take more bases anymore. Yeah, it's getting really, really difficult. And playing on this side of the map is not helping him out because that base and that high ground is making it so that those tanks and those ghosts have you know, like the corners to work with and they have the high grounds to work with and that makes it very difficult not to get sniped, for example, for those very expensive ultras. I do like, however, that Elaser is finally starting to add some Vipers, some more of these technical units that will allow him for slightly more uh, efficient trades, right? We saw it there with the Abduct. You Abduct the tank, it's a, it's a tank dead. However, he is running into so many uh, ghosts that I feel like it's up to spirit to kind of let those Vipers get the value that they are looking for. I personally, with Ultras or without any time that you get to the late game, I am personally a huge fan of Infestors. You don't need to make a ton of Infestors, but uh, but most, I think still fair to say most Zerg players at the highest level don't make Infestors. I think Serral has started making a lot of them. Scarlet has, has always made a lot of them. And some players will mix them in here and there, but for the most part, even when I've talked to, to pro players, to pro start players, they don't feel like it's like absolutely necessary a lot of the time. And they feel like maybe this army being as mobile as it is, is, you know, good enough. But Cyril has shown like, have an investor burrowed here and there, try to get a neuroparasite or a big fungal, and all of a sudden you can start turning those engagements 
and start catching like like huge clumps of ghosts with either gigantic fungals or EMPs. And then you can get those effective traits that, that otherwise seem near impossible. Yeah, I mean, just remove the ability for opponents to continuously micro back of their army. Uh, this is going to be a dicey fight, I feel like, for a laser. As a lot of the snipes actually take out a handful of the ultras early on in the fight. And then moving back into kind of awkward spot over here. I love the meta that pick up oh, over, on that side for Spirit, but I guess his top right end base does get taken out in exchange for all of it. Yeah, investors and neural parasite, and I do have to, I, and I do have to say, as of the last year or so, like or the last half half a year or so, like Cyril has been so, um, so, like he has always been making investors basically in in this matchup come the late game, um, and I have seen them added from Rainer, for example, in his play, and I haven't ha had a chance to look at everyone, but I think yeah, I think if if Miko's making them, then it's very likely that the great majority of at least European circ players are starting to add them here. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like that last little engagement may have been one of the big deciding factors there. I, I feel like Spirit got such a massive lead off of those trades, picking off all of those ultras, depleting a laser's bank, and a laser's still not maxed out. He's making some more ultras, but it's going to be a lot of ultras going into 17 ghosts, and I just don't feel like there's actually that much support for them anymore. There's, I don't even think that there's actually Lings out on the map anymore. It's a handful of these ultras popping, a handful of investors, and like five corruptors, and I guess it's one viper. Like yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so, and if we look at the units lost tab, that is probably the most important and most telling tab right now. Like, so if you look at the map, like you might think, yeah, it's half blue, half red, you know, and and the laser still not, you know, not out of it. He can still max out, and this is exactly what these investors need to be doing, and maybe finding some fungals. But very nice spread from Spirit. This might be the final moments of the game, so let's leave that conversation for later. A really nice. Uh, Neuroparasite onto one of the Thors. That's a huge swing of momentum, but unfortunately for him, there's a scan to answer that. And now Spirit with the cleanup, it's looking like a laser will have to get out of this game. And Spirit with the minor.